Hi everyone, it's Ms. Patterson here. Today I'm going to be showing you some different strategies that we use in fifth grade to solve multiplication problems. And we're going to start off with some mathematical vocabulary to just ensure that we're calling these things by their proper mathematical terms. And then we will solve two of the same problems, but just in different strategies. And we'll show you how um, these are two different ways of solving, getting the same exact answer, just in different methods. So to start us off in this red box up here, we've got a typical multiplication problem, 43 times 7. Now the two numbers that you see being multiplied together to get our final result are called our factors. So 43 and 7 are both a factor in this problem. This final result that we're not sure what it is yet, whatever our final answer is, it's called your product. So any multiplication problem, the answer is your product. Now we'll start off with our standard algorithm. This is probably the method that you're the most familiar with. Um, and basically you are just multiplying it in pieces and chunks. Um, you start with your bottom digit on the far right corner and you're multiplying upwards from right to left. So to show you this, let's go ahead and start with this first problem of 43 times seven. So I start down here in the bottom right hand corner with my seven. I'm going to multiply upwards to that three, the digit directly above it and then I'm going to go diagonal from right to left going to that 7 times 4. So when I go to solve that 7 times 3, I know that to be 21, but we only put the 1 down below. Because this is a two-digit answer that we get from that 7 times 3, the 2 has to be carried over to the next digit because we can only put one digit below here. Now the next one I would do is 7 times 4. I know that to be 28, but I can't forget about this little guy right here. So that's the number that we carried over from the prior step. So I have to add that to the answer that I get. 7 times 4 was 28, plus 2 is 30. So now I can put both digits here below our um, multiplication bar because we have gotten our final product. We've gotten our final answer. So we have all of the digits that we need, 301 would be our final product, okay? Now, with this problem, the one thing that is different is that it's got more digits and it's uh, and in, in the factors that make it um, its problem. So we have 352, which is a three digit number, and then 14 is our two digit number. Now, same process still applies. We are going to start with our bottom right hand corner digit, which is that four. We're going to go multiply upwards from starting at the right then we're moving to the left. So four times two, four times five, four times three, and then I'll tell you what we need to do when we come back around to that one. So four times two, I know that to be eight. I drop my eight down below, making sure that those place values are in line with one another. Now we do four times five, which is 20. Now remember from the last problem, I can only do one digit down below for right now. So I would just put the second digit, that zero, but I can't forget about that too. So I put it above the next digit to the left to show that four times five was 20, the zero got dropped down, the two came right above that three. Four times three now is my, my next step. So that is 12, but remember, can't forget about that little guy up there. So we would say four times three is 12, plus two is 14. So now I can put both digits of the 14 down because that is all the multiplication steps that we need for that layer. For the next step, we have this one. Now, this one does not just represent one. It actually represents 10 because it's in the tens place here. So we have to recognize that as we're solving. So in order to remember that, we put a placeholder zero in this ones place right here. So when I'm ready to multiply, it doesn't start right here. I wouldn't start and do one times two and put two here. I have to have that placeholder zero there. But now I'm ready to look at the digits that I'm multiplying. We'd start with one and we'd go diagonal starting from right to the left. So one times two. Then I would do one times five and finally one times three. Now this two was from the step prior. It doesn't apply to this part. So you can either erase it. I always just like put some slashes through it to cross it out. So I don't think about it for this next step. Let's go ahead and multiply. So one times two, two, one times five, five, one times three, three. Now you have two different numbers here, which we would call our partial products. The reason that we call them partial products is because they are two parts of the full product. So once we add these together, we will get our final results, that product of our answer. So we put an addition symbol here, draw ourselves a line so that we can go ahead and solve. 
Sometimes when you get into some big numbers, it can be a little tricky to keep your place values in check. So if you ever want to draw lines right there to help you make sure everything's straight and you don't get a little wonky um, as you're adding, that can help as well. So just um, adding those straight down, eight plus zero, eight, zero plus two, two, four plus five, we would know that to be nine and one plus three is four. We add that comma just to make sure that we have our thousands place accentuated. We know that that fourth digit is going to be that thousands place. We put a box around our final answer, 4,928. All right, so now we are going to go ahead and solve with that second strategy for these same multiplication problems. We're going to use something called the area model. Um, you also might hear it called the box model, the box method, because it, it makes a lot of sense because you use a box in order to solve it. So with these problems, um, we have to think of these numbers broken down into the numbers that they're made up of. So kind of like looking at their place value. I recognize with this 43 that it has a four in the tens place, which tells me that it's made up of 40. So with my box method, I would break this down by saying that it's 40, and then the number in its ones place is three. So I know that it has three ones. So 43 has now been decomposed to show that it is 40 plus three. This is only going to be applicable to numbers that have more than one digit. When it is just one digit, that just tells me that it's in the ones place. So this is just seven ones. So we have a seven on the far side. We also will put a little multiplication symbol in that corner to show that we are multiplying 40 plus three by seven. Now, wherever I see that little plus symbol, I'm going to draw a line downwards. You'll see on this problem over here when we get to um, two digits with more than, um, or sorry, two numbers with more than two digits, that I'll have more lines in this box. But currently, I've just got two sections. So now I'm going to look at this problem. I see that I have 7 and 40, and I am multiplying those together. So we talk about in class how we'll look for the base equation, um, which here would be 7 times 4. That extra 0, it might um, be a little unnecessary to think of. We can just add it to the end when we look at our base equation. So what I mean by that is that 7 times 4 is 28. I have 1 0 in that 40, so I just add that to the end, and I know that 40 times 7, 280. Now with this last one, we have 7 times 3, I know that to be 21. This is the same thing as before with the standard algorithm where you have those partial products that you have to put together to get your final result or your final product. Now we go from greatest to least with stacking these in order to just make sure that everything's nice, neat, and organized. And we're going to add those together to get our final result. So all the way straight down, 0 plus 1, 1, 8 plus 2, 10. So I put that 0 down, carry my 1, 2 plus 1, 3. So we have 301 as our final answer. So you can see kind of the similarities with that standard algorithm, but when we get into numbers that have uh, more than two digits for both of those factors, that's where things can kind of, um, it becomes more important to be organized with your work. So with this one, we have 352. Now I need to isolate that based off of its place value. I see the first digit is in our hundreds place. So I can see that there are three hundreds. So I would wanna write three hundreds, uh, 300. And then put a little plus symbol to show that we are going on to our next place value. I have a five in the tens place. That tells me that there are 50 in this number, 352, so 50. Finally, that last little um, addition symbol, we're moving on to our ones place. There's just two ones, so I'd write two. And we have our first factor. I'm gonna draw that little multiplication symbol in the top left corner. And now I'm going to move on to my second factor of 14. I first look at that first digit in the tens place, which is showing me one, so one, 10. And then this next digit in the ones place is a four, so I just have four ones. I'm going to draw those lines exactly where I see those addition symbols. So you'll notice how for the hundreds I did a um, vertical line, for the 50 vertical line and then the two, so that they have their own little columns. And then for the 10 and four, they have their own rows. Now for each of these little pairs of the numbers, that's where we'll multiply them and get all of the mini partial products, add them together, find our final answer. So. On this first little section, um, we see that we have the base equation of three times one, which I know to be three. Then I can add all of the zeros that are in this problem to the end. So I see one, two, three. One, two, three. And I get 3,000. 
you can see how that's a little bit easier than trying to think of 300 times 10 if I just look for that base equation and put my zeros on the end. Next, I would do 3 times 4. I see that as my base equation, and I'll add those two zeros at the end. So 3 times 4, 12, 1, 2, zeros. 1, 2, which gives me 1,200. Now I see that I'm multiplying 10 by 50, but my base equation is just 1 times 5. I know that to be 5, and I have 1, 2, zeros. 1, 2, so that tells me that 10 times 50 is 500. Same method all the way through, 5 times 4, 20, I have one zero to add to the end, so 4 times 50 is 200. 10 times 2, where I can think of it as 2 times 1, which is 2, add one zero, 20. And finally, those two ones place uh, digits, we've got 4 times 2, which is 8. So you'll see how, compared to this problem, there's a, there's a lot more partial products going on around here that we have to be organized about as we um, finish solving this one. So like I said before, you want to make sure that you are stacking these from greatest to least. So we'll start with this first digit of 3,000 because I know that it is largest. The next largest is 1,200. And also if it helps, you can kind of cross them out as you do it so that you know you've already dealt with that number. Next largest, 500. Next largest, 200. Next largest, 20. And then the least largest is our 8. This is where that's um, the strategy of kind of thinking about these digits in the correct place value by drawing a line down there. That would really help you out with solving that. Um, the more partial products you have, the, the more of a likelihood there is for you to mess up with the addition. So that helps me to see, okay, all these numbers are in the ones, all these numbers are in the tens, and so forth. So just adding all the way down, all of these zeros plus eight, just eight. All of these zeros plus two, just two. And then we have zero plus two, which is two. Two plus five, seven. Seven plus two, nine. Drop that nine down. And then three plus one is four. So our final answer would be 4,928. So those are just two different strategies of the ways that you can solve multiplication problems that we see a lot in fifth grade. Um, I hope these have kind of proved to be a little helpful for you in learning these different strategies. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.